guys what is up welcome back to keeping it will with males this is the blueprint to life after a spinal cord injury this is everything you won't find in the textbook.com so guys welcome back to episode 12 i know it's been a while right i left like a really good gab i think it was about like two months or so where i stopped doing podcasts and the reason why guys is because i felt a little funky you know and i don't want to give off those vibes you know through the speakers of your iphone or you know the speakers that took or whatever the case it is where you listen to me at okay or you know the youtube the youtube video pero bueno the reason why i did stop you know or i took a little break or whatever it's because i you know been thinking a lot and i don't want to be disabled and that's the title of this podcast i don't want to be disabled and i feel like i've been feeling guilty these whole six years because i simply do not want to be disabled Honestly, who wants to be disabled? What is disabled? What, what does that word mean? That word is, well, this is how they defined it on the Google. Um, it's a person, human, having a physical or mental condition that limits movements, senses, or activities. And I agree with this definition because I I am very limited. Um, and, I, and, you know, it's before I do continue, guys. I am very grateful. I'm grateful where I am in life. I'm grateful of all the opportunities that I've encountered, the people that have left my life, that have entered my life, the um, ¿cómo se llama? The growth that I have had in me. And I am I'm a little confused because, you know, I did have my injury, you know, at a young age. So I feel like I did have to mature a lot. So I don't know if, you know, dealing with my disability has helped me because I've matured or because I just encountered a lot of um, traumatic events that have, you know, have gave me no other option but to be strong. And um, let's go back to the, hey, I don't want to be disabled. I feel like I've been feeling guilty because I'm like, damn, like I'm grateful, but I just don't want to. And why should I feel guilty that I don't want to be disabled? Like, you know, and I feel like a lot of people are like, oh, well, you should be grateful. Well, you try being disabled 24-7. It becomes overwhelming, okay? And, you know, this is not, you know, like a sad vibe stuff, but it's something that we should acknowledge and it's accept that, you know, we don't. I, I mean, I asked, um, <laughs> I got on my little Instagram story and then I did a little poll and most of the, I think it was like 80% people were like, I don't want to be disabled. And then I clicked on their pages and there were people that were positive, that were doing shit, that were making money, that were making moves. And, you know, just because you don't want to be disabled does not mean, you know, it can look bad. Like, I don't want to be disabled. And, you know, I like a little cute or fabulous, whatever. I'm still doing what I have to do. But I, I feel like it's OK to feel that way. It's OK if you don't want to be disabled, because, I mean, honestly, like, who does? Like, I, I really miss you know, not being able to run, not being able to walk. I, I really missed um, holding hands. I really, I really miss, you know, hugging someone because I feel like I'm not that strong to like be able to like hold somebody and feel the warmth like I used to. And, and um, I feel like a lot is kind of mental with me because it's like my hands don't really have feelings on my arms. So it's like whenever I hug, so, so I hug somebody, I can't really feel the back of their hand of their their back right so I, I i really miss like being normal like you know like having no disability just because everything is different now um i, I really miss you know shaking people's hands giving people high fives um not feeling self-conscious of like every time that i meet somebody you know that they're gonna just be all awkward there's a lot of things that i miss okay and um i i don't know if it's because i'm like hispanic you know we're mexican i feel like every party like somebody's dancing right and i just can't it's it's it's, it's always like um like i want to dance you know and i feel like very limited because i can't and you know i i do follow like people that dance you know with their wheelchairs and you know they're like really good at dancing but they're like paraplegic so they can really move like this and do certain things with their arms and i can't so i feel like whenever i do i look weird to me like it's weird to me right and um if it's weird to me then that's all that matters right uh and that's kind of like what messes up with you know like my mental health because i want to do these things and i feel like i'm trapped in a body that i really don't belong in um but i mean this is why i don't want to be disabled i don't want to be disabled because i have nerve pain and there's no pill that makes it go away um uh, what else do i <laughs> i mean i have a list of things i i miss you know like 
looking at beautiful homes and thinking they're beautiful because now when i look at a house like the first thing i even if it's like a beautiful mansion i'm just like but wait is it accessible though <laughs> like wait there's like escalones there's like little steps to go inside of the house and then the beautiful house isn't a beautiful house anymore you know it's like everything like around me even like my decorations in my room um they're sometimes they're not what i want but because they are easier for me to maneuver i'm like okay well whatever right it's so it's kind of shifted from like pretty to like wait what would work for me so there has been certain things that i'm kind of like well i don't know if it's gonna work out because of this right so um, i'm trying to adjust and trying to find like cute things that would be adjusted for me when i get my house or whatever but um if you don't want to be disabled homegirl i don't want to be disabled either and i feel like it's a topic that nobody really talks about because obviously we can't change it so it's like why do we should we even talk about not wanting to have a disability well the first thing honestly not wanting to be the disabled is because whenever you go to like a doctor's appointment you have to pay for the parking and then you have to pay for your payment right your co-payment and then if you have other things going on then you have to pay for that and then you have to pay for your uh pills but then you have to wait like a whole certain two weeks to get your pills and by then you're dead and i'm like like it's a lot to do right and it's just it's just a hassle and i think i miss not having a disability because life was just so easy so easy and i wish i can like live that again and no just well i mean not that i i didn't appreciate it i just i guess i didn't think this like it could just all be taken away in just one minute right in a second so um honestly if i was to go back i would um if i was if i was you know to see old mildred i would tell her like hey <laughs> i wrote it i wrote a little a little thing you know mm <clears throat> you see the thing is that nobody tells you how to live a disabled life you know there is no blueprint how do you even prepare yourself, especially when you live with a disability that has no cure? You know, so how do you adjust to a world that is designed for able-bodied people, you know? And it's like, like this world isn't designed for wheelchairs. Like, honestly, it's not even nature. So it, it makes it makes me feel like really limited because back then, like I was always doing things that were not accessible, you know? And that's not to say that you can't do it. There, I mean, there's so many um, wheelchairs and like whatever, you know, that you can actually go and hike. But it's just not the same that... You know, if you were to do it with your own legs, like having that runner's high. And I feel like, like, it's, I'm just saying it because of my disability. Um, it's really hard to do everything because I'm weak all over my body. And um, I don't get that runner's high anymore. It's more of a like frustration type of thing. And um, I don't know. It's, it's, I just decided to talk about this because it's good to talk to somebody that is going through the same thing, that is having the same thoughts as you. And you don't feel so alone or crazy or, or just you don't feel guilty for feeling that way. And I think it's normal to feel that way. You know, I think it's normal to miss the old us. I miss the old me. Like, do you remember being normal? Because I I don't. And I think that that's why I get upset sometimes. because I'm like, I wish I could know. I wish I could just feel the sense of just not having a disability, the sense of just feeling free, the sense of just like hugging somebody and actually feeling their warmth in my arms because I can't really feel the heat in my arms or my hands. So it's like most of it when I hug somebody, it's just it's really like mental and because um, I can't really feel my chest like that. So um, I wish I can just feel the warmth of that person. And, you know, sometimes I do feel it, you know, when the energy is there when the vibe is there so it's like whenever i feel like they really want to hug me like i feel it like i'm like oh my god it's so warm so that's why i love hugging my mom and dad because it's like i can feel it like i can feel their energy that is so strong that even that even though i can't like feel them you know like feel the warmth i can feel their energy and i know that they really really like you know want to hug me that they really love me so it's like I, I, I miss being normal and and I feel like when you know people do have like a disability or traumatic event like that we go into like a stage of mourning and I feel like because people are, are always telling you like you have to be grateful that you, you you have this and blah 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 you we don't have enough time to process that we have lost somebody so it's just the same concept at the, as if somebody were to die and I know people are like oh my god like stop being so dramatic like you just had a car accident now you can't walk like you're still the same you you're not the same you like you're not and you will never be the same you because why would you be the same you like we're trying to improve ourselves and it's it's 
if time is moving, why can't we keep moving too, right? Um, so I feel like we have to accept that, you know, we're okay with not wanting to be disabled because I do not want to be disabled. I do not. I, I, I don't. I, I want to run. I, I want to jump. I want to tie my shoes with my butt in the air and my hands. Like, you know, I I want to um, shake somebody's hand without feeling insecure. I want to give a high five. I want to clap. I really want to clap and have the sound like the I, I I miss being a person that doesn't have a disability, a physical disability. And I wish I could I wish I could um tell her bye. Like I wish I could um go back to twenty fourteen and tell her that she was strong. Tell her that, you know, Mildred, you're really beautiful, independent. And, you know, I, I wrote this the other day and I was like, wait, I'm pretty much describing myself right now. Right. But I feel like the one thing that I would tell her um, differently is that she was cutting herself short. And um, I was cutting myself short by being with somebody that was like um, not a good human for me because, you know, <laughs> um, and and as I was writing this, I was like, wait, like, that's pretty much me. And I wouldn't want to be her because I feel like I've grown a lot from my experiences and I'm like a better person and a better human. Um, so it's okay to miss yourself, but you don't have to miss them anymore because you can be a better person. And although we don't want to be disabled because I don't want to be disabled, the fuck? Because I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> one, because it's expensive. One, because it's overwhelming. One, because it just makes everything harder. And I feel like I don't have enough time in the day to do certain things because I move slower than others. And while I can still do pretty much everything else that anyone else can do, I am... It takes me longer to do it. Um, but anyways, let's go back to like the morning type of thing that I did mention. I was reading this book. Um, it's called A Friend Indeed. A Friend Indeed. Yeah, A Friend Indeed. And it's pretty much to help those you love when they grieve. And I was like, and I was like, wait, this is. I thought that this was a really good book for somebody that is grieving for their for their lost for their old you because as much as you like to as much as people say like you're the same you blah 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 you're really not and you're never gonna be that person you were and that's good that's actually like pretty good because it's like we're we're living and we're growing and there's this um let's see <laughs> like uh, i don't know can you hear the book some more okay so like so let me read you the 12 steps for healthy grieving so you never thought it would happen to you, yet here you are, grieving and in pain. It is so tempting to ignore the emotions of grief because they hurt so deeply. Yet unresolved grief is like buried toxic waste. Although it isn't evident on the surface, it keeps finding ways to come up. Damn, that hit me. Didn't it hit you? Because that shit hit me. It keeps finding ways to come up, often with unpleasant consequences. It may manifest as headaches or stomach aches, or outbursts of anger or impatience against people who don't deserve it. As depression or suicidal thoughts, or as parano paranoia, um, you know, paranoid, <laughs> or withdrawal from life, it may make you reluctant to get close to another person, or it may make you afraid of love. So number one, the truth is, is that nothing can simply make your grief go away. You must acknowledge, face, and resolve your grief. Number two, this list of suggestions for healthy ways to cope with grief may be helpful as you follow your own path to healing. Number three, expect to recover because you will recover. Like, why not? Like, why not? Yes, you can. It's just going to take some time, guys, to be honest hashtag trust the process because honestly it gets better it gets better if you have that mentality in you because why not <laughs> let's keep reading affirm that you will be able to make it and that the resources you need are there if you want them you can't you, if you want which you should why not why can't you make your life great because remember guys you don't have to walk to be great one more time one more time for the one time you don't have to walk to be great. You don't. Number four, set long range goals for things you eventually would like to have or do. Allow yourself to dream, even if it seems crazy. 
Do short-term things. Go to a movie, soak in bath, read a good book, whatever comforts you and bring some relief. Number six, never go to sleep without breathing deeply, smiling at least once, and being thankful for what you still have. Remember to always be grateful, guys. Number seven, keep in touch with your feelings as you ride the roller coaster of up and down, round and round, and back and forth. All griefs gets reworked. You go through it repeatedly, yet you're always moving forward. So number eight, find ways to express your emotions. Write in a private journal, pound nails into wood, paint, sculpt, throw a tennis ball against the wall, vigorously write a letter to the one who died or left you, or do what seems right with it. Burn it, bury it, or keep it in a memory box. I write in my journal and I keep it because it makes me feel like like I made progress, you know? Even in my handwriting because I'm not really good with like getting a pencil, you know, but writing. So through the years, I have noticed that my handwriting has gotten better. And that's worked out like a motivation for me, honestly. And number nine, find at least one person you can talk to honestly and from the heart. If possible, also find a good support system, a good support group. So I'm going to skip a few and I'm just going to read you these two other steps. Okay, so decide you want to heal. Some people can let go of the pain, whether from a sense of misplaced loyalty, fear of living without it or a willingness to build a new future. Decide that whatever life you have left is still worth worth living. Decide to look for joy. Decide to make each day as good as possible. And number 14, make others smile. Give of yourself. Live in such a way that when you die, the world will be a better place because you lived. And I feel like this book is awesome. It's, it's a book, you know, to comfort people that have lost, you know, somebody. But I feel like, you know, when you have a disability that you're in, introduced, let's say you were living like a physical normal life or just whatever, you know, a, a life without a disability that you just happened to encounter, then... I feel like it, it is a, a mourning type of loss. You know, I feel like it's normal to feel that you lost someone and that you're grieving. And grieving looks different with every human. Some people process it quickly. That's what you see so many people like just say, I love my life now. And when you know, I, I, I love my life, you know, I just don't like the situation that I'm in. Okay. But I mean, I can't change it. And I think that's why people don't talk about it. Because it's like, why talk about something that we can't fix? Like, I can't fix my disability. Um, There's so many disabilities out here that, you know, we don't really talk about. Like the Angelman syndrome, like being autistic, like having like a chronic illness. I mean, there's just so many out here that actually aren't, you know, physical that people overlook. And they actually gave me this book for work, you know, because we work with like life claims. So uh, we talked to people that, you know, have lost a person. But as I was reading it, I was like, man, like this, this hits me home. Like, I feel like I'm grieving. Like I miss the old Mildred and it's okay to miss that person. But I'm here to tell you that you don't have to miss that old person. You don't have to miss the person without the disability because you can make that person better. I'm trying to be a better person so I won't feel so like, dang, I want to be here again. You know, I, the other day I was kind of like, you know, putting a list like, what was bad about her? You know, and I'm like, yeah, I wouldn't want to be that Mildred, you know, and I feel like that that, kind, that helps you out with this grieving process because although we don't want to be disabled, <laughs> we can still make this life great. We can make it great. Why not? Okay, just because you can't walk, you can't be happy. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so, or, you know, that, that's me. I usually, you know, go with the walking because that's usually when I say that I'm saying it to myself subconscious, subconsciously, but, um, whatever disability you have, life is what you make it. Okay. Um, and I'm not here to say that one disability is better than the other because then that will be ableist, but, uh, you know, we, we literally have to accept certain things to move forward i feel like after you acquire a disability guys it's really hard for some people to adjust and to accept and move forward it's because they don't want to let go and i feel that you know people 
don't want to let go of that part of them because over time I, you kind of do forget that you were that person sometimes i look at pictures and i'm like dang that was me like i could do that because i'm so invested in my new life that i don't really think about that other person um but it's okay to move forward guys it's okay to let those go memories go and create new memories because you can't stay stuck on well this is what i used to do and whatever like we need to stop we need to stop and see how you can make new memories because over time guys hobbies change and people change and we grow so say like things that i used to like do back then like i would want to like go dancing and go to clubs which i still want to dance now but i don't think i'm like really much into clubs um and i think that you know even if i didn't have a disability i wouldn't even want to be there that old you know at, at the club i'm gonna feel you know a little out of place because you know now you only have like young folks i don't want to be you know i don't want to be a meme you know on tiktok or whatever but look i'm here to tell you that although you don't want to be disabled because i don't want to be disabled don't feel guilty like bro i feel you and i wish somebody would have had this talk with me back then and and i feel like i'm hitting this and it felt so weird to say this out loud the other day like i don't want to be disabled like i woke up one day and i was like i just don't want to like i don't like i don't want to transfer i just want to get up you know like i don't want to struggle i don't want to struggle getting out of bed i don't want to take a shower sitting down bro like i don't i want to you wiggle my toes and dance in the shower i want to like scrub my head really really hard because my fingers don't really work so i do what i can you know you know i don't want to i don't want to push up a ramp you know i want to go up the ramp i want to like jump on like leaves you know and hear them crush i want to feel the water in my body when it's cold because i can't really feel the temperature of the water anymore what else do i want i i just wish life would be easier you know i wish i could drink like a gallon of water and not worrying about having an accident you know i wish i can just um eat whatever i want without like thinking like damn i'm gonna have an accident I what i really want is just to feel free in my body um because I honestly feel my body really tense and it always feels like something's pulling me like feel like right now I feel that I feel like my hands like they just want to close into a fist like I feel really like they just feel really tense um and honestly I just, I just want to feel free again in my own body because I feel like that is really tense I feel like I always have spasms all over my body um and and although I don't want to be disabled you know I'm still making the best out of it because I can't fix this, guys. I can't fix this and I can't just stay stuck in the, you know, uh, I don't like this. I'm going to be sad. It just doesn't make sense to me. You know, I feel like life is really beautiful. Like nature is really beautiful. So why am I just stuck on dang? Like, I don't I don't want to be disabled and this sucks. Like my life is hard. I mean, yeah, dude, it is. But we have to get over it. We have to move forward because at the end of the day, you're just messing up your life. You're just really ruining your life when you could experience a lot of beautiful moments with people with things with nature and um at the end of the day you're just messing up yourself and there's so many disabilities out here guys that you know sometimes when we have a disability we're just self-centered and we're like oh no my says words blah 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 everyone's dealing with something guys everyone has a disability everyone does honestly nobody it's normal nobody okay and i feel like and i wish somebody would have just told me this in 2014 nobody's normal nobody's normal so stop thinking like you're not normal just because you have any disability just because you're dealing with something everyone if it makes you feel better everyone is dealing with something guys and people some people are stronger than others so it's like whatever you're dealing with that is really hard they feel the same way like you okay so just know that everyone is dealing with something and you know we just have to push forward if you use the wheelchairs that's, that'll be a little like <laughs> a little joke push forward because if time is moving why can't we move forward and, and then guys you don't want to be regretting like saying like damn dude i was sad all that time and my skin looked really good like yeah man just yeah <laughs> 
other guys let me end it off with this there's many things I, I feel like the list can go on of like i don't want to be disabled but i feel like i've always been like a hopeless romantic and every time i watch movies or things like that i had just a different picture in my head that what romantic things will look like for me yeah, like i never thought that somebody that i'll be worried about like not walking in my wedding like i just thought that was yeah i'm gonna walk in my wedding and i'm gonna you know walk a little sexy but it's like how do i walk sexy like that if i can't really walk anymore so it's like i need to let go of like what i thought it would be and just accept of what it is right now right and i feel like um that's that's why i don't really like to be disabled because i like what i pictured of what it could have been or what everything or you know just in the movies like how it is pictured i need to like let go of that okay because i just never saw in a movie um like i seen on instagram like it's inspirational shit but like growing up i just never saw somebody in the vulture going down the aisle or like walking really slow with their crutches so it's like something that i have to visualize now and since it's so hard to walk i'm like damn it it's am i gonna be so stressed of like damn i hope i don't fall don't fall that i'm gonna just ignore the beautiful feeling of just walking down like it's me trying to walk down the aisle is that gonna take the sentiment what i should really feel because i'm so focused and okay left right focus squeeze squeeze left right move drag wait where you know <laughs> like i just this is things that i think about and that it's like okay so what's better for your mental health like just suck it up and go in your wheelchair and you know, and it's like, I'm sure you guys are thinking like, wait, Mildred, do you even have a boyfriend? No, I do not. But it's like, you know, you see what I'm saying? Like, these are things that you actually have to think about. And while I'm grateful that I can walk with crutches, it's really overwhelming. And I can't really focus when somebody's talking to me because I'm so focused in the bend your knees. Don't bend them too much. Lock them left, right, left, right. Squeeze. Eh, eh, eh. So um, that's why I don't like to be disabled. Okay and uh, okay I, I don't know if i'll get married i'm really stressing about that but hopefully i do like why can i get married you know and back to you oh, but now that we are talking about you know relationship stuff um because i'm a hopeless romantic um i i feel like um it's it's been really hard to adjust and not not like to be disabled like a lot of people are always like okay well Mildred, like like you have to like yourself i do like myself like i really really like myself like i love myself i think i'm pretty cool dope or whatever but i just don't like the life that i have to live <laughs> you know like i don't and and i man i shouldn't feel guilty you know but i am grateful um because it's just so hard to because look in my wedding day because we're mexican so it's like we celebrate with music and even when we have parties like i feel kind of like left out um, and I hate to say it, but I just do because I want to like dance with everyone else and because my legs won't do what they, they're supposed to do, you know. And yeah, I know there there is like wheelchair people. I know there's people that use wheelchairs and they dance, but I just don't feel it the same. OK, I've tried and I look a little mm, muy tiesa, you know, because my body doesn't move like that. Um, but, you know, I think about things like, damn, like, is my husband going to feel left out? um because i'm not gonna be dancing with him and i'm like well if he dances with somebody else i'm get jealous the fuck <laughs> you know i'll be like six feet six feet <laughs> um but <clears throat> yeah man i honestly feel like it's been really tough because we're mexican and you know i feel like some they always stands for everything um and that's why i really like being disabled but i mean we can still make life great guys to end it off with this guys i feel really relieved to just accept and say that i don't want to be disabled <laughs> like i really don't you know and i feel really como like peaceful with being just true to myself and saying like look man i see you putting in effort and i know you want to get better i know you want to be a, a better mildred but it's all right to not like certain things but it's so it, it's totally normal to just move forward and make the best of what you have because my disability does not ha does not have a cure you know and my only goals for the future is to not make myself any more disabled that i am you know i don't want to become more negative i don't want to um 
gain more weight just because um not that i'm fat sis or anything like that but because you know um overeating can cause like cholesterol like diabetes and i don't want to get my leg amputated like i like my legs you know what i'm saying like i want four limbs you know so it's like advice for me to y'all is that don't make yourself any more disabled you know by having negative thoughts by just um being so fucking sad like it's it's not gonna get you anywhere in life guys nowhere and you're just gonna push away people because people can feel your vibe and the way you carry yourself it's how people treat you so put out good energy and you will bring good energy back to you okay la vida te sonríe si la ves sonriendo you know life will look at you sonriendo how do you i don't know how do you say that um this hold, hold on wait life smiles at you if you see it smiling so let's just make the best out of it and if you just say that i swear it makes you feel so like damn like i don't like i really don't and sometimes it's okay to just to talk to somebody and just hear that somebody feels the same way that you do that way you won't feel like you're crazy because you're thinking about this you know um so yeah i mean just it's okay to not want to be disabled and live a positive life like you're not crazy okay so guys we reached the end of episode 12 and if you stayed this long thank you so much for staying and for supporting and let me just end it off with this i don't want to be disabled but do you let me know, comment below, what's the things that makes you not want to have a disability? It's okay, we can discuss it, like, ain't no, nobody's judging you here, okay? I mean, why would I not want to walk, <laughs> okay? Why would I not want to, to work, okay? Anyways, guys, stay tuned, stay tuned for episode 13. Todavía no sé lo que voy a hablar, pero, you know, we'll be here. Um, sending you good vibes, you know, stay motivated, drink some water, um, do something that makes you happy. Do something that makes you happy, okay? But you know how it goes. See ya. Don't want to be ya. Watch my video, guys. See ya. Don't want to be ya.